Hey guys, my name's Jim, KN4YCD. Welcome to FEP Labs Radio. Today I want to talk about this little gadget, the Rig Expert. I happen to have the AA55 Zoom model. Rig Expert makes a bunch of different models. And I want to talk about the app that they have, that they provide for the Rig Expert, where you can do all the functions of the Rig Expert through it on your PC, which is great because you can print out graphs and charts and remotely operate your rig expert. It can be inside connected at your feed point and you could be out with an iPad uh, in the field. So stay tuned, let's talk about it. Okay guys, let's take a look at the rig expert ant scope app. I'm running this on a Macintosh. There are versions available for Windows and uh, Linux as well, I believe. And as you can see, the app is set up to act like, you know, an antenna analyzer. This gives you access to every function that the actual rig expert has available on its local display. The app works with all versions of rig expert as far as I'm aware of. Um, I have an AA55 Zoom. Uh, there didn't seem to be a separate app for different versions, so if you have any sort of rig expert, this should work. The, uh, let's take a look at the settings first and, and walk through those quickly. Um, most of them are pretty self-explanatory, and you can see here uh, on this window what these look like. So we have the general settings, imperial or metric measurements, take your pick, the number of measurements that stay on the screen at one time, so you could have multiple traces for the same thing as you make adjustments, and see graphically where your adjustments are going. Um, obviously, what port you're connected to with the analyzer, and again, I'm on a Mac, um, this would be different for Windows or, or Linux, different port names. You can change the color theme. The hints are when you hover over things, it'll tell you what they are and what they're showing you. Um, you can set your system impedance for whatever kind of cable and system you're testing. Obviously, I have it set for 50 ohm for amateur stuff. We're using ITU Region 2, the Americas, uh, because that's where we are. It's where I am, at least. Uh, you may not be. Uh, you should know where you are, though. Uh, we have it showing the band names, and I have the language set to English. It has other languages, I'm sure. One of those is Ukrainian, and I don't know what the other the other ones are. Um, this calibrates just like a Nano VNA would. It has an open, a short, and a load calibration that you should perform at least once when you use it in a given session. The uh, open calibration is open. That's, it's straightforward. There's no connector on there. You could put a connector on there, but open is open, so it doesn't matter. It has a short connection. So the shield and the center pin are grounded straight together. And then it has a load connection, and since we're doing 50 ohms, I have a 50 ohm load connector. Now, I just made mine. I used a PL259 connector, a very short, like two or three inch piece of coax, and shorted the ends together of the coax and soldered it up, and that's my short connector. And then my load connector is another two or three inch piece of coax with a 50 ohm resistor across and soldered in. And that's my load calibration. And as far as I'm aware, that is exactly what that should be. There might be some variation because I'm not doing it directly to the connector, but I can't imagine that three or four inches of, of RG8X is going to make a significant difference. Now, it's very possible that I'm wrong on that, but I haven't, I haven't been able to test it yet. And I'm going to go back and build special connectors that have no cable in them at all. So it's literally just the connector shorted and it's the connector with a 50 across it. If you go over to the cable settings here, you can set what kind of cable you're testing, which gives the analyzer some more information. You don't need to do this, I don't believe, but it will give you more accurate results because it's going to change the velocity factor based on the type of cable. So we could say an ideal 50 ohm cable, that's also a 0.66 VF. <clears throat> Obviously, if I change it to something else, it will change that. A lot of that stuff is 0.66, apparently. Let's try RG8X. There we go. 0.82 is the velocity factor on RG8X. Now, I'm using RG213, which is down here. So there are the settings. And this shows the loss for my cable uh, per 100 foot and uh, then we can also tell that, that we have a specific length of cable 
and it might it will calculate the velocity factor for us. If we change any of this and we have any graphs done and you realize you've you've done these calculations but you have the wrong cable type selected, you can select the right cable type, come back and click update graphs and the application will redo the graphs based on the updated cable settings. So that's pretty cool. I'm going to close that out and get it off the screen. And now we're just looking at the actual Rig Expert app itself. So within the app, <clears throat> we have uh, several things we can do. So I can test a complete range here, which is what this is set up for over on the top right side. I, I wish this would show my cursor because I click this like you can see this, but I'm on the upper right hand side under the big Rig Expert and we're going down that side. So here I can set a limit and and check a specific band or I can tell it uh, full range and it will default to what uh, the range is uh, that you have set and you can set this also down here below that I can tell it I want to run a single sweep or a continuous sweep these are presets that I can configure so that I could look at specifically the 20 meter band so uh, you know, you could have multiple presets, one for um, 40, one for 20, one for 15, 10, so on and so forth as you go up in the bands. And then uh, these are measurement settings, and it, you can save these or edit them or rename them. Once we run some measurements, I'll, I'll show you what that looks like. And if I'm, I don't want to keep any of those, I can just clear it out, and it'll clear the graph off the screen. Across the top, if you look at the tabs across the top, we have multiple charts that we can look at. Um, the two that are most interesting to me at this point, I am um, currently studying for extra, and I'm about, I'm almost there. I'd say 80, 85 percent of the way there. Uh, so I've been reading a lot about Smith charts. The app has a TDR function because the analyzer has a TDR function. TDR is time domain reflectometry, and that'll tell you how long the cable is. Um, FYI, I have a video coming up probably this week late uh, that I'm going to hook up my antenna cable to a scope and we'll be able to determine the length of the cable and the velocity factor using an oscilloscope. Uh, so you should check back for that. That'll be pretty cool. And then we have some other tabs that I am not fully cognizant of what all they're telling me yet, so we're just going to skip over them. But if you understand it, great. Please leave a comment and tell me what they mean because I can't uh, tell you right now what they are. And then, of course, the big one for for most hams uh, is SWR. And I have it so it's showing the bands and their names. So when we run a sweep, we'll see a chart that will cover all these bands and where it falls in the band. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And I'll tell you right now, I'm using a vertical antenna, a Maldol HVU8 that has fallen over once or twice and I believe has some jankiness in it. That's a scientific ham word. And uh, so it is not optimal. Uh, the cable is only a few months old, and it's run underground in a, in a conduit, so I'm pretty sure I don't have cable problems, unless I have a very aggressive gophers or something. Um, but let me run it. And so there is our plot. And uh, as you can see, that's not really fabulous. Uh, 20 meters looks pretty acceptable. Down here, we're, uh, we've got a reasonably decent SWR uh, in the 20 meter band. Um, 15 is below 3 for the band, and 40, 30 is just whack, 40 looks not horrible, it's below 3 for that band, um, 80, the 80 millimeter, uh, the 80 millimeter, the 80 meter element is what broke on my antenna, so there actually is no 80 meter element. I'm amazed that the 80 meter band looks that good. And then, of course, I don't have anything on 160 and, and above. Uh, down here, 17 is a very narrow band and it's terrible in the fives. 15 is hovering about 3.2, 3.3 um, in, the, in the 15 meter band. 17 is horrible. 10 meters is beyond horrible. Uh, six meters is hovering in the mid four, so none of that is fabulous. And I have a DX Commander about half done. That's on my to-do list this week is to get that rascal out in the yard and get it get it put up and, and get better numbers on this. 
And then this antenna, this uh, vertical, this HVU8, is going to get taken into the shop and doctored upon and see if I can get these numbers down a whole lot better. And um, and I'll replace the NFED on my shop radio with, uh, with this vertical and have the DX commander on the radio that's here in the house. So anyway, that's... Uh, that's what that looks like from here. I can uh, pull data from the antenna analyzer. I can load save measurements from the analyzer's memory. I can grab screenshots off the analyzer. Now, the, and the hints, since the hints are on, it shows you that the, uh, and you're not getting the hints on the screen. Uh, it tells you that the screenshots don't work on all models. This is a screenshot of the window uh, that, um, that we're looking at. I can print all this, I can import and export the data out of this, and, and of course, come back to it later and, and mess with it again. So now, and I'm saving six sweeps, so let's run a sweep again. Same antenna. And obviously, whoa, that's weird. Something changed there. Because you can see there, right here, what our previous sweep was is the purple line, and the red line was our second sweep. So let's run another one and see what we get. They should they should match. Yeah, so I don't know what that was. That might have been a glitch in the matrix because the third sweep matched the first one completely perfectly. There's a fourth one. And so it's all the same. So let's do, uh, let's do a specific band. So let me grab 14 megahertz to 15 megahertz inclusive and that will show us the 20 meter band with some some range around it and as you can see <clears throat> I should have gotten it lower than 14 but uh, you can see here through through 15 megahertz what our SWR looks like that covers the 14300 there is the top of the 20 meter band um, and our SWR there in 20 meters is, is generally below 2. So that's that specific band. And then I can pull up the uh, specific Smith chart. Let's clear those settings. Oh, and that reset my... That reset me. Uh, let's do 13,500 to 15,500. Or 15,000. Yeah, 15,000 is fine. And let's sweep again. And there's our Smith chart with our um, reactants and capacitance and so on and so forth for that antenna run. On our SWR chart, there you can see I got the 20-meter uh, band now in the middle of the graph. And we have a nice fat SWR line below 2 for most of the 20-meter band. And so that's pretty cool. And you can do that, of course, for any band. The app will do UHF and VHF. My rig expert device does not go up to UHF and VHF frequencies. It only goes to 55 megahertz, which is why the, when I do the full sweep, it stops at 55. If you had one of the higher end rig experts, it should go up there and do VHF and UHF, which is an upside to the Nano VNA. Besides being a lot cheaper than a rig expert, it covers VHF and UHF. And Rig Expert obviously makes one that covers the higher frequencies, but as the more frequencies you cover, the more dollars you spend with Rig Expert. So I keep asking Santa for one of the, the Rig Experts that go up to, you know, uh, 600 or 800 megahertz. So far, Santa has not paid attention to that request. Um, we can look at phase and a whole bunch of other settings on our antenna by band, of course. This is where you can actually read this a little better. So once you figure out what all these charts are telling us, then I can come back and look at this and make adjustments on the antenna. And, and the cool thing about this app, so I have my rig expert hooked up to my antenna right here. I unplug the antenna from the tuner. That's important if you're gonna use an antenna analyzer. You do not want a tuner between the analyzer and your antenna. You want the analyzer hooked direct to the antenna. So I'm testing where I hook up to the radio at in the house. So with this on a computer and full access to driving, to be able to drive the antenna analyzer, I can go out in the yard where the antenna's at and use an iPad and remote into this PC or this Mac 
and I use remote PC for that. Um, VNC would work. Um, oh, there's four or five other go to my PC and stuff like that. All those apps would work. And so I could stand out at the antenna and make adjustments to the driven elements in the radio and, um, and see how that affects my settings without having to come back in the house and run, make a run of the rig expert and then go back out and make something, a change. So this is cool. And that way I can test my whole antenna setup from the antenna termination here in the house all the way out to the antenna out in the backyard. So that's pretty slick. And, and, and like I said, I don't have a good handle on what these are telling me yet. Um, I need to study on the documentation, and these are some things that I'm still trying to learn. I'm currently a general study on an extra, and uh, these are some extra things here. So there's a lot of things it'll do, and um, I think I mentioned it over here on the right under presets. You can create, so I can add in a, a specific band, and it'll take what I'm using and make that a preset. So now if I want to add another band, so let me do uh, 7,000. Let me back up. Hello. Let's do 7,000 to 8,000. That'll get us the 40 meter band. 100 data points. Let's sweep it. There's where that falls on the Smith chart. Still thinking. There we go. It's done. Let's go look at SWR on the 40 meter band. Not great. Not totally horrible, but not great. And I want to save that now as a preset. So there it is. It's over there on the right side as a preset, which is awesome because that means then I can make my changes and I can just click this without having to type things in. I can just click this and run these settings. It'll populate these fields up here on top with the settings from down here. And then I can rerun and see what cha my changes have done, so on and so forth. And you can add numbers, a, a number of presets. There's no, uh, there's no limit that I've hit so far. Again, these are our settings, our, our um, saved measurements. I can come in here and I can edit the name of it. I can save all this data out of uh, the app itself. And if I don't need to keep these, I can just delete them one at a time, or I can clear all of them, and it clears all those um, recordings off the screen. So once again, there's, there's our current preset for the 20-meter band, I mean 40-meter band, and let's double-click that, and now we'll run a 20-meter sweep. So, pretty cool. In any case, that's all I have for everybody today. I hope you guys got something out of this video, and I hope I haven't gone on too long. I appreciate your time and patience. Um, if there's things I've missed in this, please feel free to drop a comment. I'd love to hear from you. I'm learning, and I'm just trying to share this with, uh, with all my ham friends. Anyway, if you guys like the video, give me a like. I'd appreciate it. YouTube would appreciate it because it feeds the machine, and they'll know that my video wasn't totally worthless. Um, please feel free to subscribe. Subscribe. It's free, and it'll make you happy. And uh, make sure and ring the bell. That way you get notified whenever I post a new video. All right, guys, that's all I have for today, 73s.